that don't apply to us and why do we put up with it? So now let's look at common law. If you're a sovereign, can you do anything you want? Sure, as long as it doesn't violate the common law, and the common law can be actually pretty strict. In the Constitution, every time you find the word law, it is referring to common law. Common law is very simple. There is no complex legislated acts to remember, just two. You cannot injure your countrymen, and you cannot, or you'll have to answer for it, and you cannot breach a contract. The common law came to us from England, and we imported it and took it completely. In common law, no statutes apply. None. So that big book of all the different things that you can't do, throw it out the window when you go to court because it doesn't apply. It's very simple. The equalizer in common law is how the justice is decided upon. The jury system came from common law, and it's an excellent form of getting justice. Twelve good men or women decide if your punishment is fair. Under common law, you can haul your neighbor into court for stealing your strawberries, and you decide he should die for that crime. The jury deliberates, and if one juror is against you, the plaintiff bringing the charges, you're the plaintiff, he, the defendant, is set free. The jury decides the law and the facts of the case, and according to to the Seventh Amendment, no court in the land, including the Supreme Court, can overturn a jury's decision. So, the judge doesn't decide your fate, the jury decides your fate. The jury is your fellow man, so you get a court of the people. The Honorable jo Joseph Nielsen, Chief Justice of the City Court of Brooklyn in 1875, stated, quote, in a speech, the fact of the matter is that there exists all around us a great body of law, which has not been, nor could it be, written down in one spot. In a way, it's far more of a process which has a single guiding rule, the golden rule, a negative rule. Quote, don't do something to someone that you don't want to have visited on yourself, either directly or through the agency of a government. Quote. Though it has suffered much at the hands of legislators, common law is yet followed in all major speaking nation, English speaking nations around the world. Common law to England was and is its very force. The greatness of England certainly in the past is attributable, I would say fully attributable, to the stabilizing and enriching institution that we have come to know as common law. This subject of the common law is a great and wonderful subject. Its evolutionary development and its great benefits make it the most superior law system known in the world as history will readily tell." Quote. So there you have an example of what the Chief Justice in the city of Brooklyn felt about common law. And I'm going to read a Supreme Court decision, Hale v. Henkel. Quote, the individual may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited. He owes no such duty to the state since he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property. His rights as are such as existed by the law of the land, which was common law, long antecedent to the organization of the state, and can only be taken from him by due process of law, and in accordance with the Constitution. Among his rights are a refusal to incriminate himself, and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest or seizure except under a warrant of the law. Now how often is that practiced today? I mean, you don't have a warrant for your arrest. There's no uh, grand jury indictment that leads to your being charged. He owes nothing to the public as long as he does not trespass upon their rights. Hale versus Henkel, 201 U.S. 43. That was in 1905, U.S. Supreme Court decision. So we're going to discuss our position. As you can see, we've had a our status from the beginning until now. We started off booting the king out, we became sovereigns, and then in uh, Lincoln's time he passed the 14th Amendment, which made us all subjects of the government. How did we go from being kings to subjects? 
Well, I guess Mr. Lincoln decided it was okay if he decided that was the way it would be. So we lose our status because a Lincoln des decides that it's so, but you know they don't actually come out and tell you that because that would be too much for you to take at the time. We're just going to gradually, like a frog boiling in water, little by little, ends up cooking himself without complaining about it. We're the frog boiling in the water. Little by little, we have our rights taken away, and it's not all at once, it's little by little. So we go up to the next major change in our world when um, FDR decides in 1933 that you can no longer own anything because you don't have the right to claim ownership of anything because you don't have gold and silver to pay with anything anymore. Now, there's a good book called They Own It All, Including You, where Ronald McDonald spells it out for you, what the line of thinking is that the government uses for taking your property and stating that they own everything. But, so, as a sovereign, you're responsible for yourself. You have to be a responsible individual to be a sovereign. Teddy Roosevelt said in 1918, I believe, that in a speech, those that can't govern themselves will be governed by others. So I would rather govern myself and have the state govern me. But, you know, the state does look after people. They're the parent, you know. So let's talk about attorneys now. Most of our system is going to be dealt with just obeying, right? Mindless obeying. Hey, the government says you can't do something and you say, okay, I won't do it. You start building onto your house and your neighbor comes over and says, hey, you can't do that like Mark Stevens would say, and you um, say, why not? And they go, because it's the law. And so you go, okay, I won't do it. So because it's the law is a term that, you know, justifies, you know, getting you to do what someone else wants you to do without you actually knowing whether there is a law or not. Like how many people have ever sent a letter to the IRS and said, Show me the law that says that I have to pay taxes on my labor. Nobody, you know. Those that do find out really quick that there is no answer to that question because the IRS never sends you any proof that there is a law. If you ask the policeman on the street what law, you know, you're violating, you know, he will come up with a vehicle code violation. You know, say you can't speed because vehicle code section 7200 says you can't speed. However, if you ask them, why is that? Where do you get the authority to issue that um, ticket? Where does that come from? Who's your employer? Can I meet your employer? I want to talk to your employer. Well, I'm employed by the state, or I'm employed by the city. Well, I want to meet the city. Uh, you see, it's an impossibility. You can't meet the city and you can't meet the state because they're fictional entities. They don't exist. And as a fictional entity, they don't have any power over me. But if you're going to work for a fictional entity, you're not actually working for a fictional entity. You're getting a check signed by an agent of that fi fictional entity. And the governor is saying that he's the governor of that fictional entity. And, and, you know, and it goes on and on and on. But what gives that person the right to do anything towards you? You know, does anybody understand where the laws come from? You know, rep state representative. And ask them for a copy of the Constitution, and like I did. And in the beginning of the book, it'll start out with the Magna Carta, because that's where our law comes from. In 1215, the Magna Carta was signed, and that's where common law originates from. And after that, you have the uh, Declaration of Independence. That's a form of law. You have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And as Carl Miller would say, you better think about what that means, Ducky, because if you don't have an idea of what life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness mean to you, then you're never going to get them. You have to declare what you want in order to get what you want. 